About 2,500 years ago, ancient Rome had an intense public debate regarding the need to repeal laws that made it illegal for the patricians to marry the plebeians. However, the plebeians were not pushing for the law to be repealed because they had a huge desire to intermarry with the ruling class. They needed it done for something more. I welcome you to my YouTube channel where I explore ancient texts, and ancient texts here I mean texts that have been around for thousands of years. At the moment, I'm going through from the founding of the city by Titus Livius or Livy. This is a collection of books that was written about 2000 years ago. It covers the history of Rome from the founding of the city by Romulus around the year 750 BCE to the time when Augustus was emperor, which was close to 0 AD. If you have not subscribed, subscribe so that you do not miss any of the videos I publish. As I explained in my previous video, ancient Roman society was basically split into two groups, the patricians, the families of the early senators that continued to hold much of the political and economic power in the state, and the plebeians, the rest of the population. These two groups largely had separate social existence. The patricians claimed that they were superior not only in political structure of the state, but also in their genetic or blood makeup. They pushed the narrative that intermarrying the plebeians will contaminate their quote, pure blood, end of quote. That is despite the fact that they largely shared ancestry with the other Romans. Livy writes that the laws banning intermarriages had a lot more to do with political control than to prevent the contamination of the pure blood of the ruling class. While the patricians had for hundreds of years discouraged the intermarriages with the plebeians, the laws banning the practice were not put in place until 450s BCE during the tyrannic rule of the Decemphors, a group of 10 individuals who had replaced the consuls. In the year 444 BCE, almost immediately after the re-establishment of the Republic and the office of consuls, repealing these laws became a pressing public issue. The plebeians demanded the repeal of these laws, but it was not necessarily because they wanted to marry outside their group. The campaign to repeal the laws was led by one Caius Cornelius, a tribune of the people. During a debate at the assembly, Cornelius made a long and detailed rebuttal to the points that had always been made by the patricians regarding intermarriages. Livy quotes Caius Cornelius asking the patricians the following questions to challenge their logic. Why do you not combine to forbid intermarriage between rich and poor? Why do you not enact a law that no plebeian should live in the neighbor of a patrician, or go along the same road, or take his place at the same banquet, or stand in the same forum? For as a matter of fact, what difference is there if a patrician marries a plebeian woman, or a plebeian marries a patrician? On their part, the patricians accused Canelias and his supporters of trying to break up families by advocating for these laws to be repealed. Livy quotes the patricians making the following argument, nothing will be pure, nothing free from contamination, and in the effacing of all distinctions of rank, no one will know either himself or his kindred. According to them, intermarriage between the groups was against the will of the gods and will bring confusion not only to the state and families, but also to the children born. In fact, they claimed that intermarriages between patricians and plebeians will turn Romans into animals, and that the children born of such unions will be so confused about their identity that they will not even know what religious rites to perform. They went as far as making the argument that those children would not be in harmony with themselves. Cornelius countered by stating that the opposition to his laws was not driven by anything else but the simple and unfounded belief of the patricians that the plebeians were unworthy of political power. Livy quotes him saying, I fancy queer rights that I have often noticed in the past how greatly the patrician despise you, how unworthy they deem you to live in the same city within the same walls as they. Now, however, it is perfectly obvious, seeing how bitter an opposition they have raised to our proposed laws. For what is our purpose in framing them except to remind them that we are as their fellow citizens, and though we do not possess the same power, we will still inhabit the same country? He reminded the plebeians that the patricians were often ready to intermarry with the foreigners, but not their fellow citizens, and that there was no greater signal of disgrace than to be a part of a community but to be held unworthy for intermarriage. He classified it as worse than being exiled from one city. Livy quotes him stating, What is this but to suffer exile and banishment within the same walls? They are guarding against our becoming connected with them by affinity of relationship, against our blood being allied with theirs. He then pointed out the hypocrisy of the patricians regarding their stand on not wanting to intermarry with the plebeians. In particular, he reminded them that it was often the patrician men who forced themselves on the plebeian women. Quote, no plebeian will offer violence to a patrician maiden. It is the patricians who indulge in those criminal practices. End of quote. 
He was in particular referring to attempt of Appius Claudius, one of the Decemphers, to take Virginia, the daughter of Lucius Virginius, a previous tribune of the people by force, a crime that led to the fall of the rule of the Decemphers. Regarding the identity of the children born out of a marriage of individuals from two different classes, Cornelius reminded the assembly that the children had always taken the tribe of the father. Therefore, there was never going to be any confusion about their identity. He also made it clear that the plebeians were not seeking intermarriages with the patricians because it was necessary for them to find wives or husbands from them, but for dignity's sake. Levy quotes him saying, There is nothing that we are seeking in intermarriage with you, except that we may be reckoned amongst men and citizens. There is nothing for you to fight about unless you delight in trying how far you can insult and degrade us. The actual reason why the patricians wanted the laws not to be repealed became clear during the debate regarding opening up the office of consul to the plebeians. When the plebeians asked why they were not qualified to be consuls, this is the answer that the reigning consuls, Marcus Genusius and Caius Catius, gave them. Because no plebeian could have the auspices, and the reason why the Decemphers had put an end to intermarriage was to prevent the auspices from being corrupted through the uncertainty of dissent. Basically, the patricians made the argument that the reason why the plebeians were not fit to serve as consuls was because they lacked the necessary ancient blessings of the gods that were only given to the patricians as a class of people. Nevertheless, after a lengthy debate, the patricians consented to the intermarriage laws being repealed, but that was not because they had been persuaded by Caius Canelius or any other person present that it was a good thing for the Roman society. They used that as a token to pacify the plebeians so that they dropped their demand for the right to be elected consuls. It did not work though as the plebeians continued to push for the law to be changed to allow for plebeians to qualify to serve as consuls. If you enjoyed this video, take a moment to strike the like button. I also welcome your comments. See you in the next video.